Hey guys, it's LA. Welcome back to my page. Today we're going to be doing seven exercises for all of you who sit at a desk for a long time. So stay tuned. A lot of people have been asking for some exercises you can do at your desk. So these seven stretches are really great to do. And if you haven't yet, go back to my posture video that I posted a while ago. It will explain to you why these stretches are important. And the bottom line again is always just to move as much as you can throughout your day. If you don't have time to separately do these seven stretches, break it up throughout your day. And actually that could be even more effective than even doing these all at one time. Okay, so 30 seconds each for each of these stretches, and I'm just gonna start a timer on my phone. You can time it however you want. So the first exercise is going to be chin tucks. So for this, you're going to, it's almost like your head is on a tray and you're sliding it back off of the tray, giving yourself a double chin. So you're just going to slide back like this, all right? So start your 30 second timer. So what this stretch is doing is you're turning on those deep neck flexors, which takes your head out of this position and pulls it into this position. And then it's also stretching this area at the base of your skull. It's called your suboccipital area. So this is starting to open that space up a little bit. That's the area where um, if it's tight, it can cause headaches sometimes. So keep doing these. Good, so that's 30. The next one is going to stretch that area a little bit more. So start our timer. So you're going to stay back in that chin tuck and then you're going to tuck your chin to your chest. And what that does is it stretches this area back here. And you can go straight down or you can also go to the side a little bit. I actually feel it better if I go to the side. So to really get that the base of your neck, try not to tuck your head all the way down. It's more of a chin tuck like this. And you can stretch the other side. Again, move through it. Good. So that was 30 seconds. And then the next stretch is an upper trap stretch. So people get a lot of tightness up here. So for this stretch, you can either grab onto your chair and then tilt your head over, or if that's too much, you can just tilt your head without grabbing onto the chair. So start our timer. So I'm gonna grab onto the chair and it's just opposite ear to your shoulder. And you can feel this all the way from the base of your, your ear to the top of your shoulder. And then you don't have to stay in this. You can move through it, which I like doing, to find those different areas that are tight. And again, remember you don't have to hold on if it's too much, but I like to hold on. I'm gonna move through this stretch. Good, and then same thing on the other side. So grab on ear to shoulder and stretch. Everybody's gonna feel this stretch differently, so that's why I like playing with it a little bit to find what works best for you. Or if you don't wanna move, you can just hang out. Good. Okay, so the next one is called scapular squeezes. And for this one, you're going to open up your chest and squeeze your shoulder blades together. So this is a great stretch for kind of those pecs that get really tight in this position. And then it also helps to turn on those back muscles that help to pull you out of that position. So what you're gonna do is palms up and squeeze those shoulder blades together. Try not to use these muscles as much because we use those a lot. So kind of squeeze your shoulder blades almost straight together or even down your back as you do this. You don't have to go very far. This kind of turns on those rotator cuff muscles too. This is a really great stretch to do wherever you are. If you don't want to do the arms, it's totally fine just to pinch your shoulder blades together like this too. Good, that was 30 seconds. Okay, dun dun dun. The next stretch is called thoracic extension. This one's gonna feel really good. So a couple different ways to do this. So you can either do, the more difficult way is with your arms straight, going back like this. This will give you a little bit, make you a little bit more top heavy, so give a little bit more weight going backwards. If that's too much, you can do this. 
arms behind your head. And even if that's too much, you can stay down here or even down here. But you're essentially just trying to arch backwards. All right, let's do this for 30 seconds. Let's go. So I'll do a couple like this. This is also a nice stretch for your flats here. Maybe some of you don't have a lot of room to put your arms up, which I hope you all have room to put your arms up. But if you don't, arms on your head. You can come back this way. Stretch your arms back. This one feels really good. Oh, I'm really tight. Ugh. Good. 30 seconds. So the next one is called nerve flossing. So our nerves are really important to keep healthy, especially when you're sitting in this position a lot. Sometimes people get like numbness and tingling in their hands. So a lot of times that's your nerves. So we want to make sure our nerves are moving well through their pathway from your neck to your hand. So for this one, it's going to look like you're holding a tray and you're going to go, your arm and your head are going to go away from each other like this. If that's too much, because you at the end of this range, you will feel probably a little bit of tingling here. Some people will, some people won't. If that's too much, you can just do the head and just hold your arm here, or you can just do the arm. So this is gonna be the most taut your nerve is gonna be doing it both at the same time, okay? So let's go for 30 seconds. Your arm and head just go away from each other. It doesn't need to be a really forceful move, just nice and gently. Imagine your nerve is like um, fishing line and you're a fishing line through a fishing pole. So it's just kind of flossing through those pathways. Sometimes you can get a little numbness, residual numbness and tingling after. But that was 30 seconds, switch to the other side. After you do this, just because you are tensioning that nerve. If you do, just don't, don't do it with the head and the arm, just do the head or just do the arm. And actually, even if that is too much, you can also just do the wrist. Good job, a couple more seconds on this side. Good. Okay, so this last exercise is going to be a lumbar rotation stretch. So this incorporates more of your full body. So I really like this one to do more often throughout the day versus just these upper body stretches. So for this one, let me scoot my chair out for you guys. So for this one, you're going to rotate to one side and kind of anchor yourself down by holding the table and chair or whatever you have around you. And then you're just going to flex and extend in this rotated position. So let me start my timer. So you're just gonna flex and extend and kind of stay in whatever range you're comfortable with. Some people will have more range with this, some people less. Sometimes you'll hear, hear a few pops, which is great and probably feel really good. You can also deepen this stretch by either rotating more or anchoring down, kind of opening up your arm. This will kind of bring your chest into it a little bit more. Flex and extend. Good, and then just switch to the other side. So anchor down, rotate, and then flex and extend. Oh, I'm definitely tighter this way, so I get more pops going this direction. Feels really good. Good, so that was 30 seconds. So, that, like I said before, that exercise is really good to do more often throughout your day. And that's kind of the bottom line with all of these stretches is the more often you do it versus doing all of these at one time is actually gonna be better for you. So I would be, I would rather you break your day up and maybe every half hour to an hour do a couple of these stretches versus doing all these stretches at one time but only a, being able to do it maybe once or twice um, throughout your day. So definitely the more often is better. And then in the future we'll go over more exercises that will incorporate maybe a little more of your trunk, your legs, um, even some stretches you can do at a standing desk. So stay tuned and we will do a lot more of these exercises.